I mean, right now, New York is a great place to have left, it seems. Uh, yeah. We're part of a, a fortunate demographic with a, a country cabin to retreat to. So I thought we were just coming up for a few days. My daughter and wife seemed to know better, but didn't want to mention a long extended stay in the country to me for fear they'd lose me. Art Spiegelman is the author of Mouse and the Shadow of No Towers. We've got Quig at the helm here of the ship of state, and it feels like uh, he's a negative indicator. Whatever he says, like, just try to, like, put it in a mirror and then do that, you know. So mm -hmm. he wants to get everybody up and running again so his hotels can reopen. If you can become dispassionate enough to think of it as being an alternate reality, then it's kind of, is amusing the right word? Uh, it's as absurd as the situation could demand. I think screwball is the nature of the beast, you know, and uh, it's an idiom that's fallen out of favor in many ways, but it's still alive and kicking. You know, most of my screen time, uh, when I'm not looking up a picture to draw from or writing to a friend, is spent spending an unhealthy amount of time just trying to understand what world is being built. You know, like way too much uh, consumption of uh, news and links from news to other news and articles and some of it's just oh, stop this look at something else please and then i'll go back to those comic book websites download old comic books and search for images like that and you get used to the fact that uh visual imagery is coming that way even though i prefer books well you know for an end of the world moment it's very benign i'm like you and most others uh, used to self-isolation. If anything, it's crowded in this cabin, yeah, although everybody has their own home office here. Yeah. Um, so it's cozy. We have two cats scurrying around, and my wife and daughter Dash is in Paris under his own lockdown, mm -hmm. working on uh, uh, virtual reality projects as a producer for a startup and has been there for a couple of years mm -hmm. uh, and seems to be okay. Uh as he said, like when Francoise was panicking and trying to reel him back home, uh, what he pointed out that World Health Organization would probably approve of him staying there and us staying here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, uh, family dynamics, you know. It's very benign, you know. Yeah. It's a very nice place. It's the woods. Yeah. Uh, um, I have my childhood drawing table that has my laptop mounted on it at the moment <laughs> in that room. And... Um, I'm just figuring out what to do with these little tools that I brought with me and some that had been stashed up here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I spent a few days trying to figure out what to do directly about the virus and figured it's too soon, too soon for me. Mm -hmm. uh, that even that last time when I quipped about uh, disaster being my muse, September 11th lasted about three or four months before mm -hmm. uh, September 12th started kicking in. So I'm willing to let all this process and figure there's a lot of people who are glommed onto the present moment and gliding forward somehow with that yeah. as direct data. But um, I've got projects to keep me busy. It is what it is. I don't have anything that's so burning that like I'll stay up all night and work uh, yeah. at the moment. Um, but as soon as something comes along, I just work at it until I see what where it landed. And like I said, I've been working on other things that are more like using a word processor rather than uh, a pen. Yeah. Uh, it's all okay. I mean, it's all like uh, there's still stuff rattling around in there and wants to find uh, a place to go out to. I look back with astonishment at uh, what it meant to be doing mouse back at, at that moment because it was uh, everything one does is to avoid something harder. And that was what that was at the moment that I was doing it. But even then I'd still wake up every day and wonder if I could make it make something. Mm -hmm. uh, so that part getting older just makes it a little bit slower and making it uh, in the midst of a cataclysm means that your attention deficit quotient has gone higher and having a screen makes it go infinitely higher than that. Uh, but, but somehow or other it's like, I don't know. I think I once said it wrong, and my kids have been delighted with that ever since. It was always one step yeah, forward, yeah. two steps back. Yeah, uh, it's true that it's easy to get stunned into silence. But uh, you know, working in my sketchbook was really just fine, and I was doing that for a couple of years. And uh, I didn't have the same mandate that was in my head once before, which is it has to be published for it to exist. Yeah. Is there anything you'd want in this moment to to tell a young cartoonist? Um, that, that 
any 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 wisdom that you've gotten over oh. the years uh well don't uh get too complacent about what you've got under your uh skin here as you work because like i said i really allowed a pump to run dry because uh drawing with never came all that easily to me and uh it was easy to move sideways as other possible things to do presented themselves and no burning need was there i think my friend ken jacobs uh once said everything one does is to avoid something harder mm -hmm. uh, which includes um <laughs> you know not committing suicide because there's something the hardest thing you can do might be there and uh i admire the artists who work through thick and thin i think it's a estimable trait and i think my notion of every project is starting from zero again with that Sisyphean rock and trying to roll it uphill, finding a way to draw a concept, a way of approaching it. And there's another more standard uh, road, more traveled, that's probably healthier, which is like, allow yourself to develop your vocabulary and just use it, perhaps. I think the wisdom I found when I was dragged into a writer's conference that I didn't think I had any right to be in, and somebody asked for words of wisdom, I just said, it's a lot easier to write when you've got something to say. That's true. I mean, I find myself locking up very easy. You know, like yeah. I'm not good enough. Cancel, yeah. Cancel, cancel. Um, and on the other hand, you never know what trail you're following that can open up into uh, a long road. So, um, um, so I'm just, you know, following whatever roads feel open and seeing where I can go within that. And uh, impressed with all of the activity that's going on around me. Like there's so many cartoons whose names I don't know now. <laughs> it used to be easy to know everybody's name because there wasn't that much to look at. Let me see, what else have I been looking at even? I've been looking at uh, a lot of old stuff uh, more than new. I kind of, if I had known I was going away for longer, all those unread Little Orphan Annie and Dick Tracy volumes that are on these shelves that I've been collecting for when I can slow down to read are kind of beckoning to me. Uh, and finding a lot of stuff online. I spent one day just looking up Spanish flu cartoons in old newspapers online. Um, but it's interesting because they weren't allowed to talk, you mm. know, like it was during the war and nobody wanted uh, you to get depressed by this other viral war or bacterial war that was going on around, around them. So it was mostly just the lighter side of the Spanish flu uh, that I was finding. Oh uh, yeah. But now the whole world has gone virtual. It's funny that we're in like a, a kind of what what McLuhan called a global village. We're totally there in the middle of a global pandemic, but with a village that has its electronic highways through it. When I read one article among the many that would continually panic me, it was like, oh, can the internet withstand all the zooming and meeting and uh, heavy Netflix consumption and whatever? But so far, so good. Which reminds me of a cartoon I keep thinking of and can't find, but it's in a box somewhere back home. When I was a kid, there was a series of gag cartoon painted um, bubblegum cards from when I was before my bubblegum uh, enlistment. And it was just a card of a drawing of a, uh, a tall building, an open window up near the top, and somebody who had leaped out. And he's only about a third of the way down, and he's waving to you as the reader, going, So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs>